Much of the advice we hear is to keep up with our network. So that we can hopefully find the next opportunity sooner. That can be a good strategy. But this week's book poses a different idea. It doesn't really matter how many people you know. Or how deeply you're connected. What's more important is that you connect with the right people. And usually those right people are the ones you least expect. That's right. The people you haven't talked to in a long time. This book shows that who you know isn't important. What really matters is who's a friend of a friend. Let's see this in action here in David Burkus' book, Friend of a Friend, Understanding the Hidden Networks That Can Transform Your Life and Your Career. Welcome back. You're listening to Motivation Minute, where we unravel the timeless truths in that stack of books you've been wanting to read so that you don't have to. And this week's book is Friend of a Friend by David Burkus. And you know, Jariah, this is a networking book. We haven't done a networking book in a while. Yeah. I'm trying to think of when the last one was. Was it Never Eat Alone? Could have been Never Eat Alone. You know, How to Win Friends and Influence People. Right. That was kind of about networking. So obviously... Networking is a fantastic tool for career or even just in your personal life. And this book gave me a new view of networking that I I, uh, was filling out my note card and I started going to the back and writing down all the people I should be contacting that I'm not Hmm. having read this book now and realizing what I've been doing wrong about networking. But here's the concept. So a network, if you think about it scientifically, you have routers in a network. So I'm, I'm talking to you over our video chat client and mm-hmm. there's a router between me and a router at where you are. And then there's devices attached to those routers. And so each of those routers is a cluster. It's like a group of people. Okay. Like we're a node in the network. Oh. Okay. And the act of networking is bridging between routers. Okay. The cool thing about that is when you connect to another router, you have access to all the devices on that router that you never knew were there. So is it like kind of like that, like that kind of like classic diagram or whatever on a whiteboard of like overlapping circles where it's like one group clusters and then they kind of overlap or? Yeah. So it'd be clusters that overlap or it could even be clusters that are connected by one path so that that path links them. So yeah, same concept. Interesting. So, so there's, so we all have like social groups um, and friends that we know. And typically when we think of networking, we think of you know, oh, we have to meet completely new people, right? Right. But it's uh, it says how you can actually, it's more effective to go with your current network, right? Right. And it also is effective to look at how your relationships are in a strong versus weak sense. Okay. The book was bringing up. So like a strong friend or a strong tie is someone who is a close friend who, you know, you go to first when you need advice with a tough decision. That would be like a mentor or someone like that. Right. A weak tie is someone who builds a bridge to new information you haven't discovered yet. Uh, And usually that's a person you haven't talked to in more than a year. And those are people that are not really friends, right? So it's like when we think of networking, we think, oh, we have to meet totally new people that we have to like somehow force a relationship and say, we talk about like, you know, we first meet someone like, oh, what do you do? You know, we talk about really formal stuff. It's not really what normal friends actually do or talk about. So I guess I like the concept of in networking, even if it's for business, you want to be friends with the people, right? You want to, or people that you're already friends with, like you want to take advantage of, um, of, of friendships and you want to create friendships, not just networking opportunities. Yes. Because if you can leverage your weak ties, this book was saying, you are more likely to find new information than if you talk to the people you already know. Because the people you know aren't going to have new information than what you already know because you talk to them all the time already. Okay. Okay. If you talk to people you don't usually talk to, they expand your perspective, give you more of a bird's eye view. Right. I'm actually learning how in general, um, there's actually way more information that we've already Uh, we've already seen but we haven't actually fully absorbed it or it's like you go back to the same book 
and you're like, oh, whole new things or the classic thing is with the Bible. You yes. Know, it's like there's never ending things because you see things, but you don't actually absorb it and learn it. So it's like you, your current relationships or connections or opportunities, there's all these there's all these opportunities within those that you haven't actually taken advantage of because you haven't spent time going back to the same information. I naturally want to just always look for new things, new opportunities. Sometimes that's not as effective as going back to the same things. Yeah. Uh, the book was saying that adding each new person to your network grows your network faster and faster exponentially because that person adds that many more people that's a friend of them to your network indirectly. So we mentioned earlier that we tend to form clusters. Yep. And the problem with a cluster is it limits your viewpoint, of course, and you naturally become less spread out. So you become in these, it's like if you look at a map of lights at night over the US, you see the cities, they're clusters of light. Yeah. Then the prairies are just dark. Yep. And those are structural holes in networks right. that happen when you cluster. And the problem is when you're in one cluster, you're unaware of what people in another cluster are thinking and doing. Okay. So your cluster thinks alike. The reason a weak tie is stronger in many ways than what you would think of as a strong tie is because you get access to a different way of thinking from a different cluster if you connect with people in that. Okay. But the, I guess what the book talks about is the method that you do, right? So is this, if I understand it right, instead of leaving your cluster and looking at another cluster directly, it's saying you can actually do that by looking at friends of your current friends, right? Yes. So people that you're already friends with, they already, some of them will already have friends in, in other social groups and clusters. So rather than trying to, to start from scratch or like, you know, make a new relationship somewhere else, you can go through one of your current friends, which is going to give you a lot of leverage and it's going to be a lot easier to make friends. If you're, if it's a, it said, I think, yeah, a friend of a friend is actually is actually already your friend that you just haven't met. <laughs> so it's like that is a funny way of putting it, isn't it? Because it's like they, you know, the same person, and that's a really good common interest or common point to start talking. You know, so you have some friends, like friends in another state, or that you don't talk yeah, to very that often. You don't talk too often, but you've known each other for a while, or you you know you know of each other. You could use that as an opportunity to to meet somebody someone else. You go visit them or something and they introduce you to new friends. So yeah, you can use some of your weak ties or just or just connections you have to to specifically t target other social groups. Yes. In a sense that's that's absolutely true. Here's the other tool that's really powerful from this book. Multiplexity. Now, what that means is having multiple contexts of a relationship with someone will strengthen your ties. So, if you have someone that you know as a friend, also as a business associate, and also from doing shared activities with or something like that, that's a lot more powerful than just knowing them as a business associate. Okay. You think about, I imagine this is the case with you and your business partner. You, you guys just don't work together for business. You also are friends. We are in some ways. We That's what creates a much bigger connection. Yeah. Yeah. And if you did not have both connections, it would be more challenging. And yeah. uh, having two connections makes it a right. stronger thing and you have linkages if one thing totally. breaks down. Exactly. And it's not even necessarily doing other things that to, in, in order to be friends outside of business, but just talking about personal things and you know being vulnerable and, and having a connection, talking about things other than just your work. That can be yeah. huge, huge with creating relationships. Actually, someone famous that has had this happen is Warren Buffett. So he decided to donate his fortune to the uh, most of it to the B Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Why? Well, hmm. it turned out that he deepened his trust with them by building a personal and a business relationship with them. Now, how is it personal? Well, he and Bill Gates would play bridge. Really? They're playing cards. They would do it in person and online sometimes. No way. And by playing cards, they created a relationship where Warren Buffett's like, I'm going to give my fortune through your foundation. Like, <laughs> how powerful is that? Yeah. Wow. So in in having that connection, that really, really benefited. Well, so surprising. It was, it was for a charity, but you know, that that really benefited the the 
the Gates or Bill Gates. I mean, that's a lot of money. Still think about Warren Buffett's (laughs) fortune. It's huge. (laughs) Like to commit that, he committed a significant portion of it to them and then also some to his family, but a lot of it went to them, which is incredible. Yeah, that's amazing. Wow. And it's because of relationships. There's another story that he mentioned about how the UFC was created or apparently it, it existed before Dana White, which is like the the uh, face of the UFC or before he st- took over. But basically the UFC was like going out of business, but then Dana White and his, and another friend of his, because of a connection, I think an unrelated connection, I'm not totally sure, don't quote me, but they connected and at the right moment had this friendship and decided to go to, to start it together. And then it was obviously really successful, but, but yeah, how just having some in friendships in the right places can be huge. And then adding the business to the friendship right. makes it more powerful. I had this happen uh, just recently. So there's a guy I met at work who's also a pilot. And I'm like, hey, we should go flying sometime. He's like, yeah, that's great. So outside of work, we went flying and it was awesome. We rented a plane, went out, you know, went from uh, Baltimore to Harrisburg and back. And, mm-hmm. you know, we, we were sharing our flying interest. We had to relate on a personal level. Mm-hmm. Then I go back to work and it's a whole new deal with him at work where, you know, we joke all the time. It's, we also like to relate about flying. It's like we have this right. relationship beyond, I have more of a relationship with him than pretty much anyone else at work right. in a lot of ways because I've done things personally outside of work. With right. Him. Yeah. It is I it, it is huge to have in business to to know somebody prior to doing business with, with them or having some type of relation, you know, it 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 makes it it's like cold calling versus warm calling or whatever. It's like yeah. if you if you are friends in at any level if you can become friends with someone first, like I feel like you could take advantage of it, someone you know you want to do business with in the future first, like somehow <laughs> casually contact them as friends or somehow that would make the business opportunity a thousand times more likely to happen. It's so like have, being friends with someone is, I've experienced that in my business. You can do business with them much easier. Ooh, I've got an example of how reconnecting with a weak tie made a huge difference. Okay. So this was part of my, um, this was before I began a job search. So I was graduating from college. Okay. And I was still in college at the time. And there was this guy I'd gone to a networking talk where he was like talking about his business and his career advice or whatever. So I went up and I talked to him afterward. I'm like, I I told him what I liked about it. And then there was nothing for months. Then I emailed him out of the blue. I probably a year later or more. And I'm like, Hey, I met you. Remember meeting at this, uh, the thing was called slice of advice. It was a pizza party. Um, and, uh, when you talked there, here's the things I liked and can we meet up again? He's like, yeah, sure. So I go to meet him at his office have this great conversation with him just about, you know, his industry. He's in tech. And uh, he's like, you know, you want to meet my technical recruiter? I'm like, oh, sure. I had no idea what to expect. (laughs) This was not what I went for. So I go into this guy's office who has no idea who I am. He only knows me through this weak tie of mine, who's sort of a weak tie of that guy's. Okay. He's like, all right. So uh, what brought you here? I'm like, well, I'm, I'm starting to look for a job, trying to figure out what to do. This guy gave me a strategy that became the foundation for my entire job search from then on, <laughs> starting from how to build a LinkedIn profile to how to apply for jobs, what things to be thinking about when you're applying, where to look for the thing I want. Okay. He also you know, showed me like on LinkedIn... I am a couple weak ties away from just about anyone at any company I would need to talk to. And this guy's got thousands of connections on LinkedIn. And he's like, you know, you're you're looking at this company. I know the uh, person in the C-suite for this group. And, you know, I could get you a connection there if you need something or this, this, this. He doesn't even know me. It was the most amazing experience that a weak tie that had a friend, which so it's a friend of a friend, was able to you know, propel me into the next stage of my job search, which right changed everything for me. It's amazing. Yeah, it's it's crazy how many people we're potentially in contact with just through our current friends. Um, yeah, it says like um, I, w- I just watched a video by Jordan Peterson where he was explaining how you know little things that you do can actually make a huge difference over time with it potentially impacting millions of people because. Because you're actually only one person away from a million people. Now, that's it seems really hard to believe. 
but that it, is hard to believe. It's like, wait, one person. Wait, that doesn't make sense. But do you know how many people that you you could know just from one person? Like, I I talked to a guy just not long ago who knows P- President Trump personally. I got to he was speaking. No way. He was speaking at this conference, and then I kind of went up to him and talked to him, and he knows P- President Trump personally. So I'm one person away from Trump, and then I I just talked to this other guy at the, at the same conference. It was actually just last week, and he's the son. He just happened to be the son of Zig Ziglar. What in the world? Yeah, yeah. And so you're one person away from Zig Ziglar too. Yeah, and and this guy knows, you know, all tons of people in that you know arena or that people like that. And so it's like if you and and you think of just random friends that you have who met this famous person or or no, you know, it's like you potentially have so many people that you that you're not that far away from through your friends. You know, I love ski lifts because they give you the most awesome opportunity to meet a random stranger for five minutes and then they disappear and you meet someone else the next ride up. And I was skiing this year and I met an aviation defense lawyer from New Zealand who was on the Malaysian flight 370 disappearance case. No way. I know about that flight. Yeah. (laughs) So you're one person away from that aviation defense lawyer now. Right. See, it's crazy how that works. You met him, but I'm one person away from him because of you. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> so like, yeah, it's amazing. It is staggering to realize that, you know, 1,000 friends to each having 1,000 friends makes a million people you could know. That That's very hard to believe. But if you embrace this weak tie model where you focus on the friends that you haven't been focusing on, that's how you get to that point. Yeah. Because if you only focus on the deep friends, hey, that's good, but there's a balance. Because you have to focus on some deep friends to go deep. But then you also need the weak f- ties to get the jumps that your deep friends can't mm. give you because you're right. in the same group. Okay, because basically we we all have... It said, we, I think, we can meet over a thousand people in our, in our whole life or be friends. We'll know a thousand people in our whole life, but probably only, you know, less than ten percent of those will be good friends. And so, yeah, you have your good friends, but generally, you know, that's only limited. But you have so many other, you know, distant friends that you could be using to meet new people and to, yeah, it's crazy. So basically, that's my number one takeaway: that you don't want to fixate on building a network; you want to learn to navigate. The network you're already in okay and realize what that network is because it's bigger than you realize that's awesome my that's same for me you know and it it's not even just with friends i think for me it's almost everything yeah it's like that that saying uh bloom where you're planted we always think we have to yeah. have new opportunities look for new things but if we actually just focused on some of the things we all the opportunities we already have those it'd be amazing what we could do with them so We hope you liked this book, guys. Thanks for listening, by the way. And if you want to hear an episode like this every week, all you have to do is tap subscribe. And we love your book ideas. We haven't seen any coming in on the survey lately. We'd really like if, you know, at least we got one or two more responses. If you want to tell us the books you want to hear, go to motivationminute.com and tap survey. And we'd love to hear them. Yeah. And also, we would really appreciate if you left us a review on iTunes. Yes. Help us help us uh, show up more in the search results, and uh, that helps us out. That would be a big help. So thanks for listening, and we'll see you next week.